Hello everyone and welcome. I hope you all had a good Christmas. I certainly did. It was a nice little break, but now I am back. Today, I want to discuss the games that I am personally looking forward to and I'm excited about that are coming out in 2022. What will this year bring for me as a gamer and hopefully for some of you as well, because these, these aren't little indie games. These are some of the most anticipated games of the year, not just for me, but for a lot of people. With that, all aboard the hype train and let's start getting excited. Well, maybe, because let's be real here, we've all seen far too many Cyberpunk 2077s, No Man's Skies, and Fallout 76s to be as naive to believe that these games are going to be everything they promised that they would be. So I think we need to have a healthy amount of scepticism and a healthy amount of caution with any new release. We all know that we should never trust a trailer because it is only ever going to show you the best bits and a lot of the time bits that won't even be in the final game. Also, now say it with me guys, no pre-orders. We all know pre-orders are a bad idea. It's just a way for companies to gain money and secure sales and also gauge, you know, how popular is this looking to be. But all it actually does is encourages them to put a game out and fix it later because they know they've already got the sales from it. So, but, but, Let's be honest, as a gamer, you cannot help yourself but get excited for a new release. You cannot help yourself but get excited when you see the new trailer for the game you've been looking forward to, or a leak comes out that shows maybe some new mechanics or what the world is going to be like. We all get excited when that happens, about games that potentially we have been waiting years for. So with a level of healthy scepticism, let's reboard the hype train and head out to Anticipationville via Excited Town. Now, a small interjection from future me before I proceed with the video. One thing I forgot to record in my intro and I wanted to state was that for the most part I actually cloister myself away from new game releases because when I buy the game I like to have it as the most freshest experience that I can possibly have. So the games I'm going to be talking about today, I actually know very little about them and that is intentional. So if you're looking for a video that's going to go in depth about the games that I'm going to list here, this isn't the video for you. I'm mostly going to talk about the older games and why I'm excited for these new ones coming out. So thank you, and I will now return to Past Chris. The first game on today's list is God of War Ragnarok. Now, I am particularly excited about this one, mostly because God of War PS4 was my first experience in the God of War series, surprisingly. Being the massive gamer that I am, the God of War original trilogy completely passed me by. I never played them. I still haven't. So with that in mind, when I loaded up God of War PS4, I was surprised. It was a genuinely shocking moment. I, di I didn't really know what to expect, if I'm honest, but I'd heard of God of War and it wasn't quite what I was expecting. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it was brilliant. It is an absolutely fantastical single-player experience, which... Sometimes these days are neglected for the multiplayer option, but it is genuinely imaginative and fantastic. As a game, it gets so many aspects right. There is an amazing emotional story. The storytelling aspect of the game is genuinely intriguing, and you want to learn more about these characters. You want to follow them on their journey with Kratos and... Boy. 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 It has... A fairly large explorable world with very distinct different locations, but quite nicely not too big. We're not talking Breath of the Wild RDR2 big here. And because of that, it never quite feels imposing. It never feels like you get lost, and it certainly never feels intimidating in its size. It's, it's the perfect amount of exploration for the game while still keeping it fairly linear and on some rails to be able to have the emotional impact of the story. Now, one of the more interesting things I found was the mechanics of the game, even though the game is effectively one long escort mission, with Kratos escorting Boy. to the top of a mountain to spread their mother's ashes. Now, we all know why escort missions are infamous amongst gamers. They are generally awful. The AI is awful, and they often get themselves in a lot of trouble, and it, it just becomes a pain. But in this game, the AI for... Boy. 
is actually really good. He's genuinely helpful. And let's also be honest, that f that Frost Axe, the way you can hurl it and then just summon it back, it made me feel like Thor. And any game that makes me feel like Thor, it gets a 10 out of 10 thumbs up from me. Personally, I'm hoping this game will continue what God of War PS4 did right, but also with a little bit more finesse and potentially adding in some new mechanics and maybe finishing up on the story as well because it was left on a little bit of a teaser and a cliffhanger. I also hope that they stick more with the action-adventure RPG style of the PS4 game rather than going back to the sort of hack-and-slash style of the PS3 games. I think it's better. I think it's certainly better for telling a story and I think it's just a more interesting game to play as well. And I'm hoping we can just get to a stage somewhere in the story when I can just place a slap right across Odin's stupid one-eyed face. Horizon Forbidden West. If you've watched any of my other videos, of course you knew this one was coming. I am a super big fan of open world action adventure RPG sort of games and this one was one of my favourites. Horizon Zero Dawn is genuinely up there in my top 5 favourite games ever. I thought that the focus on Stone Age weaponry like the bow and arrow and the slingshot was really interesting when put up against the enemies which were you know, machine dinosaurs with lasers and rocket launchers. It was cool. I think that's the, the best way to describe it. It was just awesome. Also, I know some people had a problem with the story of Horizon Zero Dawn. They felt that it was predictable or that it was just cliche ridden. I'm gonna have to be a contrarian here because I really liked it. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was fairly unique. I thought that the big plot twist was genuinely quite interesting and something I'd never really seen before. And honestly, when that big plot twist is revealed, <laughs> I was so shook that I had to pause my game, walk out into the living room, and discuss it with my wife for a bit, because I just felt I couldn't carry on. <laughs> Call me nostalgic or, or whatever, but I think any game that can elicit that sort of a response from me is deserving of praise, and it's definitely something that I'll be excited about for more of the same. So with this sequel, as I mentioned, I don't know that much, but I do know that it is set in San Francisco, and it looks like we're going to, again, have another really interesting map. It's clear that they've added in new and different types of enemies, which again opens up those different strategic possibilities. I'm sure there'll be new and more interesting weaponry as well. But most of all, most of all, I'm hoping for another dynamite story. <laughs> Allow me to regale you in a story. Cast your mind back to the halcyon days of 2018. A simpler time. A gentler time. A time when I was playing Human Fall Flat with my best friend. Now, during that gaming session, we started to discuss our mutual love of Harry Potter. Whilst there had been a few good games, uh, based around the actual books in the Harry Potter series, no one had yet made a, a large Breath of the Wild style open world RPG set in the Harry Potter universe. Now, this confused both of us because we thought the Harry Potter universe is ripe for somebody to do something like that. We further talked about the fact that you could have an RPG-like system where you could learn new spells as you went along, or maybe you started in first year, and as you went through the years in the school, you gained more knowledge and more spells. It, it's almost the perfect system for levelling up. Effectively, we invented Hogwarts Legacy before it was even announced, and that's the game I want to discuss, Hogwarts Legacy. It is basically the game me and my friend created in 2018. Although, frustratingly, neither of us have seen a penny for it, which I, I just think is wrong, personally. But, from 2018 to the present. Now, there isn't actually that much information about Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, certainly not an, a lot that's been confirmed, at least. And, again, I am somewhat cloistering myself because I like to have a fresh experience. What we do know, however, is that it is set within the Harry Potter universe. You can create and customise your own witch or wizard. Then, further, you can choose which house you're going to be in. I think for me, I would probably be in Ravenclaw, but let's be honest, I'm not too sure because you effectively have Smart, Brave, Evil, and Misk. And I'm, I'm not sure whether I would be Misk. From there, you are set out into the world to explore and carry on the game. There is a fully explorable Hogwarts castle, so you can really delve in and explore and find all of the mysteries that are waiting there to be found. 
Now, there have also been hints that there's going to be like a karma-based sort of system, such as in Red Dead Redemption 2 or Fallout, where you can be good and fight the good fight, or you can be not good and just do it for the evils. The only thing I'm really worried about in this game is that it was originally slated to come out in January 2021, delayed by a full 12 months to January 2022, and we are now January 2022, and it has been delayed again. There is no confirmed date when we will actually see this game on shelves and in our hands. I'm slightly worried that it might end up becoming vaporware and just not exist at all. I really hope it does come out because I mean I have been looking forward to this since that day in 2018. For now though, all we can do is hope. Breath of the Wild 2. Of course this one's coming up. I think for almost anyone who plays video games, this is one of the most anticipated games ever, I think. Now, that name isn't actually confirmed, so it might end up being called something else, but what we do know is this is a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild. And this game has got very big b shoes to fill. I mean, Breath of the Wild is, in my opinion, one of the single greatest games ever made. And I think if you're into open world action games and whatnot, it is the best game ever made. For me personally, it's my favourite game ever. It is perfect for me and what I like in video games. Honestly, the only game that really comes close is Red Dead Redemption 2, and that is mostly because of the story in that game is fantastic, but in terms of just pure fun, Breath of the Wild just sort of sneaks in there at the top for the pure exploration value. Okay, whilst I do cloister myself away from a lot of these new releases, there really isn't that much information about Breath of the Wild 2 out there at the moment. I'm just going to go on what I'm anticipating here, and what I want is, is honestly just more of the same. Breath of the Wild was one of those games that once I finished it, once I'd done all 120 shrines, and I'd done all the DLC, and I wanted more. I immediately started a new file and played the game again. The only thing I would really change is I would like more dungeons. I think having only four Divine Beasts... That's three. <laughs> Take two. I think having only four Divine Beasts was a little small. It's certainly the fewest amount of dungeons in any Zelda game. And also made them a bit bigger, you know, giving us more sort of big, grandiose dungeons and temples, like the Water Temple from Ocarina of Time. And that leads me to my second point, which is I feel they could have made it a little bit more difficult. Again, like the Water Temple. I felt that most of the Divine Beasts were pretty easy. With that said, though, I did love the concept of the shrines, because I felt what they gave you was something to explore for. It gave you a reason to look into every nook and cranny. To me, felt like there was always something there. If you went to a spot on the map that looked like some sort of a landmark, you know, a big hill or, like I said, the bottom of a canyon, there was always something to discover. I also know some people didn't like the weapon system in Breath of the Wild, the way that weapons degrade after time. I I'm going to have to be a contrarian again. I really liked that. I felt that it constantly forced you to adapt and evolve because suddenly your sword is broken and now you you're using a lance or a spear. And because of that, you can't use your shield. So your whole strategy about how you're fighting an enemy has to change. You can no longer depend on blocks and parries. You have to focus on dodging. It's a slightly different mechanic and it requires slightly different inputs and timings. And that's what I enjoyed about it. As I sort of alluded to earlier, details are still pretty scarce about this game. But man, am I more excited about this game than almost anything else. Almost. <laughs> So here it is, my most anticipated game of 2022. Of course it is Kerbal Space Program. The first videos I ever uploaded to this channel were actually KSP tutorials. And at first, that's where I thought this channel was going to go until I made a video about a different space game called The Outer Wilds and I sort of discovered that I preferred talking about games than one specific game. I have to say though, I love Kerbal Space Program. I mean, you can see my little jab over in the corner uh, that I got for my birthday, actually. And when I say I love this game, I mean I, I 400 hours love this game. I did close to everything you could possibly imagine in that game. I had space stations around Jupiter, or Jewel as it's called in Kerbal. I had rovers on virtually every planet. I did manned missions to 
almost every single planet. The only one I couldn't do was Tylo, one of the moons of Jewel. And if you play Kerbal, you probably know why I struggled with that one. My problem was getting home. Kerbal Space Program 2 effectively promises to up the ante on almost every aspect of the first game. So we have more planets to land on, more parts to make your spaceships out of, so they can be really truly unique and everyone's going to be able to make different ones to suit their own playstyle. And also, of course, their own mission objective. Kerbal famously doesn't really have anything for you to do, you have to create your own objective. One of the big things they've promised, though, is interstellar travel. Now, that's the one I'm really looking forward to. If interstellar travel really is embedded into the game, then that might be the best bit of the sequel. Probably because it will be the hardest bit of the sequel. And the reason I love Kerbal Space Program is because it's hard. And that being the hardest thing you can do really tickles my fancy. I think the reason I love the fact that it's hard is because it makes anything you do in the game a genuine, real achievement. You've probably messed up a lot and had to revert back to the vehicle assembly building just to, to tweak things, even stupid things like you forgot to add parachutes. It happens to the best of us. And the great thing about Kerbal Space Program is even what would be deemed simple things like achieving orbit or doing a return manned mission to the moon, or the mun as it's called in Kerbal, is hard. You have to put the work in, you have to put the hours in. If you've managed even those things, you should be proud of yourself because it's Kerbal is a hard game and it doesn't hold your hand. It forces you to work everything out for yourself. But when it works and you manage to pull off whatever your objective was, man does it feel good. It is the realest sense of achievement I think I have ever had from a video game. The one thing I am worried about though is the game was originally supposed to come out in March of 2020 and it has been delayed time and time and time again. Now it just says 2022. But there is a bit of me that's starting to worry it's not ever going to actually come out. Now, for those of you who don't know the ins and outs of KSP2 development, there was a bit of a scandal that went on where the first development team who were making it, their company was actually shut down and the project was passed over to a different development team who were mostly made up of the first development team. It was, it was a big thing. It was really some shady behaviour by Private Division, the publishers of the game. It was way more complicated and messy than that, but I honestly don't have the time or the energy, frankly, to go into that right now. But that that's a little sneak preview of my worry regarding this game, is that I'm just scared it's never going to actually come out. Here's hoping, though, that it actually does come out in 2022, and if it does, I'm going to be lost. Either these videos will stop, you won't see me for months, I, I, I will be gone for playing that game. There you have it though. Those are the games I am most looking forward to and anticipating in 2022. There are quite a lot of other games that are coming out such as Elden Ring or Starfield or the new Pokemon Legends Arceus game which really looks like it might upend and, and, and change the whole Pokemon formula which I find very interesting but they didn't make the top cut for me. The, those were the games that I'm most interested in. Uh, along with some other things I'm looking forward to in 2022 uh, around gaming. I'm hoping that the price of graphics cards are going to come down slightly, but uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm dreaming on that one. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not, though. If you think I missed anything or you think that there are some better and more interesting games coming out this year, that's cool, man. I'd love to talk about it. Hit me up down in the comments or whatever. I would genuinely love to discuss that with you and see what you're interested in as well. It's... It's one of the things I love about the game community. Everyone has their own little Venn diagram of what genres they're interested in and the games that they're anticipating. So yeah, if you think I've missed anything or you think some of the things I've mentioned aren't worthy of it, hit me up. I'd love to talk about it. For now though, that'll be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this video, though, please do consider giving it a like and a thumbs up because it really does help with the algorithm. If you really like this video and you want to see more of my upcoming stuff, hit that subscribe button. If you really enjoyed this video though, and you want to watch more of my content right now, two videos will appear on screen, here and here. This one is the latest video that I made, and this one is a YouTube suggestion that they think you'll like from my catalogue. For now though, thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and you stay safe. Goodbye.